Um, okay, now I will give the word to uh, Vera uh, Gorbunova. Welcome, uh, uh, Vera. Normally, there is no problem to share the screen and uh, uh, the information about you is already in the chat. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm trying to open my screen sharing. Just yeah. a second. Normally, it should be behind. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I have a new yeah. system on my ah, computer yeah. and it's giving me trouble. Okay, while, while mm -hmm. uh, we are waiting, uh, uh, um, Irina, maybe if you want to say a few Words about uh, lifespan uh, test on uh, rats and mice. Security, privacy, to grant access. No, uh, Irina, if you try to answer, you are muted at the moment. But no, yeah, what was the question again? It, it was about uh, uh, a test on uh, lifespan, really, for uh, rats and mice. You know, or rats. Well, or I mice. made the specific. <laughs> I made the specific slide to say that lifespan is studies are meaningless because animals who are very sick will be considered in a positive mm -hmm. column. But we are doing um, a little bit better, I think more rational study on the lifespan or health span rejuvenation in mice right now. Okay. So very, very nice to see you and I'm um, looking forward to your presentation. Well, nice to see you too, Irina. So now, Everyone can see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. I, I apologize for this technical problem. You know, it's like every time you install an update on your computer, you never know what's going to happen afterwards. Okay, well, it's an honor to follow after Irina's presentation. And uh, thank you, Irina, for this overview and the breakthrough uh, that you presented. So I have kind of a similar introductory slide. <laughs> Uh, showing species with very diverse lifespans uh, where we have short-lived species like mouse or shrew, uh, naked mole rat that lives 10 times longer than even bowhead whale uh, that lives 200 years. So there is this huge um, diversity of lifespans and uh, uh, one of the directions of my research is to understand what's different um, with animals on this end of the spectrum, understand those molecular mechanisms, and then implement them, hopefully for treatments. So this is kind of a you know, big uh, diagram. So we study those exceptionally long-lived animals from whales to naked mole rats. Well, I also have a squirrel here. It's a long-lived rodent. Uh, and then we identify what is special about their biology and create mouse models. And then if the mouse lifespan is extended, so that gives us a proof of principle that we can go and design uh, therapeutic interventions for human patients. So because from the title of the conference, I understood we have to focus on mouse lifespan. So I'm going to show you uh, a few examples of how we implemented uh, this approach and then tested it on mice. Uh, so the first, uh, Quick story is about naked mole rat. It lives 10 times longer than a mouse. We've been studying it for a very long time. Uh, and uh, one of the striking findings was that naked mole rat has very unique uh, extracellular matrix. Uh, it is filled with these molecules of hyaluronic acid. Uh, that is, well, it's also present in human extracellular matrix, but there is much less of it. Naked mole rat has like 10 times more and the molecules are much longer. Uh, so we decided to test whether we can use this adaptation, whether we can recreate it in a mouse. Uh, and we made a um, transgenic mouse that expresses naked mole rat gene for synthesis of hyaluronin, so this uh, component of extracellular matrix. And I must tell you that naked mole rats, well, they not only live for a long time, but they're also resistant to a variety of diseases. Recently, we showed osteoarthritis. Uh, it's been known for a long time that they're resistant to cancer. Uh, well, they, they get it, but very, very rarely. Uh, heart disease, neurodegeneration, so they're resistant to all of those. And now we made this transgenic mouse 
Uh, we tested its lifespan. So I'm showing you lifespan data. They live longer, uh, not by a lot, but significantly longer. Uh, we also tested the tumor incidence in these mice. So they develop fewer tumors than the controls. Uh, and uh, we are characterizing them. So what really came up is uh, probably one of the most striking differences molecularly between <clears throat> these transgenic mice uh, and the controls is that they have lower levels of inflammation. So that may be actually relating back to Irina's talk because um, you know, some of the factors that accumulate in old blood are inflammatory factors. So having a lot of hyaluron in an extracellular matrix actually uh, helps reduce inflammation. So that may be uh, one of the contributing factors for these mice living longer. So hyaluron has anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, and of course, now we are thinking about how to apply that to human interventions. It's not very straightforward uh, because Hyaluronin is a large sugar molecule, so it's not very, it's not obvious that just by taking supplement, oral supplement of hyaluronin, you're necessarily going to achieve the same effect. Although there are some publications that claim that even oral supplementation was beneficial, but um, this all needs to be experimentally validated. Okay, so now the next story I will tell you is about uh, DNA damage. So here we are talking about intrinsic uh, damage within each cell. So does the cell get older? Uh, and um, well, we are subjected to damage and we can repair ourselves. Uh, but as we get older, that function of repair starts to decline. So we can no longer catch up uh, with all the damage that's inflicted and that's what brings about aging. So it's not just the passive accumulation of damage, but it's also how our bodies and our cells are able to deal with it. Uh, so here we also applied comparative biology approach uh, and we measured the ability to repair DNA damage, specifically double strand breaks in 20 species of rodents with very diverse lifespans. Uh, so this is the work of Xiao Tian, a very talented graduate student. Uh, he measured the efficiency of double strand break repair in those species, and there was a very strong correlation between repair efficiency uh, and maximum lifespan. So long-lived species are much better at repairing DNA. So that was published in 2019. Uh, and uh, I will just give you a brief summary that we, of course, wanted to find the mechanism, what is different between long-lived species and why they can repair their DNA so much better. Uh, and what we uh, found was that there was a largest contributor to this was a protein called SIRT6, so sirtuin 6 uh, which explained the larger part of that variation. So sirtuin 6 it's a homologue of yeast SIR2 protein that was shown many years ago by Lenny Guarant and David Sinclair to extend yeast lifespan. Uh, but now SIRT6 is a mammalian homolog and it does something similar. It helps maintain genome stability and promotes DNA repair. So we were even able to identify specific amino acids within SIRT6 that are different between mouse and beaver. And if we swap those amino acids, we can make beaver, we can make mouse SIRT6 as good as beaver SIRT6. So we could specifically target uh, amino acids and improve the function of SIRT6. So now, of course, the next question, will it extend lifespan of the mouse? Uh, so those experiments are ongoing. Uh, we have mice with different versions of CERT6. We put human CERT6 in a mouse, bowhead whale CERT6. So bowhead whale lives even longer than human, uh, naked mole rat. Uh, and uh, you know, it was already published that if you overexpress mouse CERT6 in a mouse, they live about 15% longer and mostly male mice. Uh, so here we expect a much greater effect because mice have very weak CERT6. It's not a strong enzyme at all. Uh, human enzyme is, you know, maybe five times better. So we will see here we expect much bigger effect, but those experiments take time. Uh, so we are now setting up aging colonies of these mice. Uh, but what I want to tell you 
uh, that you know that was all very good and that is comparing species that have different maximum lifespan on sort of evolutionary scale uh, but of course the question is like within humans if you have more active cert 6 is it going to make you live longer or not so that's a very important question uh, and we have some data that it would also work the same way. So uh, we identified in collaboration with Yusin Su and Nir Barzilai, uh, we identified uh, variants within CERT6 gene uh, in human centenarians. So here within the C terminus of CERT6 protein, there are um, substitutions in centenarians, and when we tested that CERT6, centenarian CERT6, we find that it is better than wild type human CERT6 at repairing DNA. Uh, it's also better at suppressing transposable elements that are kind of genomic parasites, and I will say a few words about them uh, next. Uh, and they're also better at killing cancer cells. So even in humans, it seems that um, stimulating CERT6 is beneficial. Uh, so now the last topic, transposable elements. So I mentioned genomic parasites. So major part of our genome consists of those elements. So they are remnants of different viruses that integrated into our genome in evolutionary times. So they are these parasites. Uh, and uh, when we are young, uh, they are suppressed. So our cell keeps them silent. Uh, but when we are getting older, what happens, uh, and that's also been published a year ago, so I will just give you sort of a big picture. Uh, what happens with age, uh, those transposons start to be reactivated. So in a young situ in a young organism, everything, your chromatin, your DNA in the cell is nicely compacted. Uh, transposons are silenced, only those genes that you want to be expressed are expressed. But with age, epigenome starts to deteriorate and transposons become activated. Uh, and for a long time, it was believed that when they get activated, the major damage they inflict on us is making mutations because they hop around in the genome. Uh, but what we discovered here that mutations, yeah, they do cause mutations, but that's unlikely to really explain, you know, major contribution into aging because there are not that many mutations, at least in functional genes. Uh, but, you know, much worse things <laughs> that transposons can do, they trigger inflammation. So how they do it? Uh, they actually escape into cytoplasm in the form of reverse transcribed DNA. And that DNA looks to the cell like a virus. So our cells respond to them as if we are infected, even though it's, uh, it's completely sterile. So they are all internal parasites. They're not external viruses. But it triggers inflammation. It triggers innate immune response through activation of SIGA sting. Uh, and uh, CERT6 actually plays an important role in silencing of those transposons. So it's not only involved in repairing DNA breaks, but it also has a second job at silencing transposons. So we, you know, now if you think about transposon activation with aging and this whole concept on inflammaging, so that may be actually contributing to multiple age-related diseases. Uh, transposon activation is detected in multiple autoimmune diseases, but also in Alzheimer's disease, in the brain transposons start to get active, um, other degenerative diseases. So that may be that contributed to sterile inflammation. Uh, and then we asked the question, if we inhibit them, you know, will this, uh, will the mice live longer? So the first test we ran on uh, a premature aging mouse model, which is CERT6 mouse model. They live, they're very short lived, uh, CERT6 deficient mice. So this is, these are the mice if we un untreated, but if we treat them with inhibitors, uh, of line one transposons, we can double their lifespan. Um, but you know, you could say, well, these are very sick mice. What about wild type normal mice? So in wild type mice, we don't have the final lifespan figure, uh, but we measured, we administered to them inhibitors of transposons, and then we measured methylation age uh, using methylation clock developed by Vadim Gladyshev. Uh, and we see that the treated mice show lower age. Uh, so we were also looking at P16 luciferase expression in these mice. And again, the treat anti-transposon treatment reduces P16, which is a biomarker of aging and senescence. Uh, 
Uh, and then here one more twist on third six story. Uh, we have different mutant versions of third six, and there is one version that actually directs third six towards transposons, resulting in stronger suppression. And we have the lifespan data for these mice. They actually live significantly longer, about 20% longer. So what all together, and that's my uh, final slide, I could say that activation of CERT6 may be beneficial uh, for human lifespan extension because CERT6 contributes both into more efficient DNA repair, suppression of transposons, and better epigenome maintenance. So all of that together uh, helps lifespan. And again, also, I would like to connect it to brilliant talk by Irina because she was talking about those factors um, in the blood uh, that may be accumulating with the age. And I think transposons really contribute to that because they trigger immune response. And there may be also even transposon RNA or DNA that's circulating in exosomes. So that may be also important contributor to that aged blood phenotype. Uh, okay, so I would like to acknowledge my wonderful lab members uh, and also collaborators. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Vera. Uh, we have time uh, for one uh, or two questions. I would, uh, yeah, um, so I invite people to ask uh, questions, uh, please. Uh, uh, not too long if you have questions. If there are no questions, I have one maybe. Uh, so uh, Vera, um, when you show when you were showing uh, lifespan, you said uh, in one of the first slides, uh, saying that uh, there was an increase, but not a very big increase. But I noticed like very often that concerning the maximal lifespan, there was no progress. Uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, it's all uh, very often the case that when you see uh, studies about lifespan of, let's say, normal mice with something, it's working for uh, average lifespan, uh, but not for maximal lifespan. Yes, I think you're probably referring to the first uh, treatment, which yes, was hyaluronic yeah. acid. No, there was maximum lifespan increase. Uh, strangely, it was sex specific. We saw it in males, but not in females. So I don't know. Many treatments we see that they work differently in males and females, but uh, for that particular one, yes, there was a maximum lifespan extension as well, but just in males. Okay, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Vera. So while we are waiting for you, uh, if there is somebody having a second question for uh, Vera, we can do it. Uh, yeah, I see many questions in the chat. Go ahead. So I could start maybe one by one. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's see what was the first one. Uh, whether. Yeah, I choose one. <laughs> um, well, Eduard de Bonnell asked how long hyaluronic acid, how far from human trials? Um, well, you know, I think uh, it can, you know, it, it's a very benign molecule, so it could be tried as a supplement. Uh, I think big challenge is first we have to obtain log hyaluronic acid because a lot of what you buy in supplements, that's actually pretty short because it's much cheaper to make it. Uh, so I think it's important to uh, have a good, you know, quality supply. And then, you know, that is a very, I mean, it can do any harm, that's for sure. But I think those trials can be made. We just need to um, find a good source for hyaluronic acid. We can't purify it from walrus, you know, it's not a very efficient way. They, they are small creatures. Uh, so we have to find a good, reliable way of uh, making it. Thank you, uh, Vera. Uh, 